Okay, let's do this. Uh, I've been looking forward to playing this game. I had it on my wish list for a while and now it was on sale, so I thought, well, that's that's timing and it seemed like a... a what do you call it? It's a sign because I just finished uh, my other Let's Play, so let's do this now. Unfortunately, I had to change from uh, Shadow Play to Play Claw because Shadow Play um, and this game doesn't like each other, and I also I've tried you know record um, desktop mode and stuff, but I can't enable it, so I think it's something to do with my software. But anyway, I've had major issues with Play Claw, so I'm hoping that it won't be this time around. But uh, well, we'll just have to. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but hopefully n there will be no issues. Okay, so I've uh, set things to max. I've also done some, uh, you know, fiddling with the sound, so I hope that will work out. I don't know anything about this game, uh, more or less, th th other than the event it was based on, or inspired by, not based on, huge difference there. Um, so... Also, you know, Sean Bean, need I say more? God, that man's voice is fantastic. Love it. Boromir, <laughs> rest in peace. 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Otorten Mountain. Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace, and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen, from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered, deep under the snow. Oh, here we are. We'll try out the max settings, but it might be that <laughs> if it can't handle it, I uh, might have to turn them down. Oh, dear me. Yes, maybe. Looks 
great though. So this is made by a little independent uh, Polish company, I believe. Oh, I can't peek in. And as I gather, it's mostly about exploration, finding clues. Lovely music. I can't get up. Wouldn't this be a f Ah! How do I get up? I'm already stuck. <laughs> In a walking simulator, no less. Oh, here we go. Well, about walking simulators, so-called. You know, fuck the haters. Um, some people complain, like, oh, walking simulators are not games. Well, it is in this format, you know. A Harlequin novel is not Shakespeare, but it's still in book form. Whatever you think of them, I'm not comparing walking simulators with that, because I think some walking simulators have extraordinary stories and and visuals and, and are very... Um, I think can give you very much. Um, you can gain a lot from them, uh, experience-wise, and I... I think it's just a matter of opinion what, uh, uh, you know, what floats your boat. Some people like it, some don't. There's nothing more, uh, you know, difficult than that. It is a bit choppy. I might have to turn this down, but we'll, I'm just going to try a little bit longer and we'll see. I think they want us to go this way. looks very much abandoned, I must say. And I'm not a fan of snow, I really hate being cold and wet, unless it's the good kind of wet, you know what I mean? But um, uh, I really hate being cold. Snow is beautiful, the snowy landscapes, but I hate winters. And we can have really, really bad winters in Sweden. Not as bad as Russia, but... It's not not my thing. This is huge, though! I'm a little scared I'll get lost. I saw in the options menu that I do have... I have a map. Um, I don't know if I have that now. No. So it's not, you know, given to me yet, but I do have a map and a flashlight I'm gonna get and stuff like that, so... A fast travel, I mean, if this is as huge as it feels, it's, go it's gonna be really good with fast travel uh, option. It doesn't seem like I can jump, though. Maybe that would put you out of the... Uh, experience, perhaps. <laughs> it's a really good setting, you know, for something like this. That's for sure. Great sound. Great sound. Yeah. Ooh, that's good stuff. What? This little... Ooh, and I do have footprints. That's also a nice detail. You'd expect them in modern games, but you know... Oh, there we go. Okay. I just want to check this out. I can. 
The lagging sort of scares me a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, something is about to happen. And then it's like, nope. Nope, I think this was just scenery. I don't think we can get in here. Nice scenery, though. I've lost track of the road already. I ran past it. Holy moly. This is not a good sign. <laughs> Let's check here first. I think it's just the end of the... I think we're supposed to go the other way, but let's just check. Oh, I could have gone this way as well, I guess. So, it's so big though, there's so much to... That's what she said. So much to explore. to the music it started it restarted I think I've re-triggered it <laughs> sort of it seems like you're, you're gonna be able to find stuff like everywhere but of course it's a very desolate your eyes are drawn into all these little oh that's uh, I've seen this in the trailer but it's a very striking visual thing to have those like it's creepy I came from there right um, so I think we're supposed to go into the creepy part, and there may be not anything else to find around here. Ew! This doesn't feel good, you know. Are you coming to me? Don't mind if I do. I thought I was. I thought he was the. I mean, I thought I was Sean Bean, but. Or the character he plays. Oh, I'm getting visual um, impairment. What a great soundtrack!
I think this is just to, to, to symbolize. No, I don't think there's anywhere to go because everything is just whitewashed, but I think... I'm still moving, but... Um I mean, this is supposed to emulate the feeling when you're in like total snow and you have no nothing to indicate your um, direction or anything. It's really un really unnerving. Oh my god, that's creepy. That's very clever of the game, though. That whatever direction you go, this is gonna happen. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> 